Welcome all filmmakers here in the film world. My name is Thomas Kenyon, video editor, live video specialist. Each week, I bring you an inspiring person or message that helps bring you closer to the film world. Thank you for visiting my link and podcast. Now, lights, camera, action. This is episode 108. As we all know in the film world, having a purpose for writing a script for a feature or a TV show could make or break your whole storyline. In this episode, I called upon someone who is helping people to discover, rediscover their purpose of themselves. And that is why I invited Robin Cho in the film world. He is someone I had connected with through another popular podcaster and life entrepreneur, Lewis Howes, of the School of Greatness. We were both a part of his online mastermind, School of Greatness 10.0, back in June and July 2017. We talk on the five key reasons why purpose is lost, as well as how to find it again. Now please, let me introduce the one, the only, Robin Cho. Hello, filmmakers, we're in the film world, and I have a special guest today here to talk about a big concept of film. And it's something that if you don't have, then you're not going to be successful. Whatever, whatever, in whatever project you you do or set out to accomplish. And I have here today Rob Cho. He, we met virtually in about six, eight months ago, and this connected with another podcaster and another popular podcaster Lewis Howes through the School of Greatness and he as well as I was was inspired to start up his own podcast the Happiness Quadrant the HQ and he does some other things we can get into later of that Let's give a warm welcome to Rob Cho Hey man, thanks for having me on. Yeah, like we said, uh, we we met virtually uh, through Lewis, his self development program called the Full Greatness Academy. And yeah, man, that was just a blessing, a blessing for me, and as I'm sure it was for you as well. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad to be here and finally connect with you, man, and, and get and get get this message out there. I think it's a very important one. So you're on to something. So let's just get right to it. Uh, what's just learn a little about about yourself? What gets you up in the morning? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I think just having and knowing I have another shot at another day for life. Um, it's just that's what gets me up in the morning. I know that uh, you know when you're doing something for a purpose and when you have a passion doing it that is what gets you up in the morning and knowing that you get another day to do it it's it's just it's it's like a double doozy <laughs> it, it kind of gets me up both um, i never really struggle having to get up uh, and get upon my day so yeah man just knowing i have another shot at, at life and you know knowing that that uh, I'm, I'm making a difference in the world and uh being able to help people is what gets me up in the morning yeah, you, you say it, what it, it got me up in the morning when I I was checking the Instagram feed and all, and I just after a few likes, comments, whatever, I I added a story, just a simple still shot of me like in the dark, getting up, and just said getting ready to shoot another record another podcast and you know, that just got me going today i got ready for the day and so what is yeah, your gift 
that you have in this world the people that you feel they need and want Mm -hmm. I think it's just being compassionate you know understanding what another what another person is going through and really really being empathetic towards them I think that is a real gift in itself Um, before I used to think it was kind of stupid and you know, it used to drain me a lot, I'm not gonna lie, but I've learned how to kind of open it, uh, sorry, to, to kind of invite it with open arms and, you know, just being compassionate, I think, is uh, is one of those things that not many people can do. And I think the world can, can use more compassionate people, that's for sure. So, purpose. Yeah, like having a purpose. Um, you know, you and I talked about this earlier, uh, why it's so per- important for pretty much any industry to really have a purpose. And I always talk about the end game. Always have the end game in mind. Always know what it is that you're striving for. Always know what it is that um, you really, really want to accomplish in your life at the end of, at the end of it all. Um, and what does that look like to you? You know, ask yourself, what does that look like at the end of it all? What am I, what am I doing? What have, what have I accomplished? Or what am I doing that's, that's creating, you know, all kinds of happiness inside of me? And, you know, how am I serving others with that? Um, that, that is a purpose in itself. Um, no, it's, no one's saying you have to be like an entrepreneur and you got to go make millions of dollars and, you know, build a multi million dollar brand and you know have all this fame and success no one's saying that i mean some people else purpose in life is just to be a great husband or a great father or a great whatever what have you a great family man or just somebody who is working inside of a, a corporate office maybe that's just his uh his purpose his purpose is to be the best uh, employee that uh, that serves his company, and I think just having the end game in mind, knowing where you want to finish, um, that is what really will drive you. And that will, will give you um, clarity, I think. So purpose. Why is well, it important to have a purpose? Um, because you don't want to wander throughout life not knowing. Um, you don't want to just be in limbo. It's like, it's like getting in your car and, and, you know, not even knowing what to eat and then driving around town aimlessly, um, trying to figure out what to eat. And by that time, you're just like not hungry, you know? And so it's, that's why it's important to have a purpose. You know, is if you're hungry, you know that you want food then go fill your belly with the food that you want and don't be so indecisive about it just you know just know what it is that you want be be certain about it i think um a key indicator of you know successful people and the habits that they that they implement every day is knowing you know what exactly they're going into you know um and and that's and that's only to say when it's when it's geared around their business, obviously, uh, there's time for, you know, life balance and have you can't be too rigid in that. I think you should always have, um, you know, your options open in terms of that. But in terms of your business and, you know, personal success and gain, I think that's why that's why it's just super important to have it. There are so many people walking this planet just blind, not knowing why they are here. What would you have to tell them? Yeah, I mean, I touched upon that a little bit in the last question. Um, You know, there are a lot of people walking around aimlessly. They are getting in their cars, driving around aimlessly, not knowing where they're trying to go. Um, And and that's fine. That's completely fine. Uh, 
but it's not fun when you don't have an end game in mind. Um, like for example, in my journey, uh, when I got started with uh, the DOD and starting my podcast, I had no idea, you know, what it is that I was doing or what it is that I was creating. I just knew that at the end of it all, this is what it looked like, and I knew that there were certain things that I needed to get there in order for that to actually happen. Right, so I took up podcasting, and I took up, um, you know, uh, becoming more in tune with social media, and uh, learning how internet businesses work, and you know, things of that nature. And so, it's okay to not know, you know, what to do in that moment, but just at least have the end game in mind. Right? Like, just know what it is that it looks like at the end, so that when your days are filled. They're going to be trying to, you know, get to that end goal. And so, if you're walking around this planet blind, not knowing why you're here, um, I think one of the biggest things to do is do a lot of you know, soul searching and do a lot of personality tests. Read a lot of books about the self. Um, read, read a lot. You know, the book's book told a lot of secrets in them, and, you know, I think that's where the keys are at. A lot of uh, other people out there like to say that leaders are readers, and it's true. Most readers, um, you know, they read because there's so much wisdom to be had inside books. So that's where I would start. Um, and, and, and journaling, you know, write down your thoughts. Write down what it is that you're thinking about. It doesn't have to be right, wrong, or stupid, or right, or like, it, it could be anything. Just whatever it is that your thought, your thoughts are, just write them down and, you know, take a moment to analyze them and you'll see what you start to veer towards. Um, normally when people ask like, you know, what, why am I here? And I, and I usually tell them it's just because you know, you're here to serve people. And that's it. And however you look at that, and however you serve people, you know, that's just the navigating that you need to do. Um, but as long as you know that you're going to be happy at the end of it all, serving others and, you know, whilst working on yourself, I think that's just where I would put you guys at. If you're not knowing where you are, or knowing what you want to do. Yeah, I like that yeah. that you you That's... brought up the journaling as you, to write write down journal, you know, as well as reading in books that other people have written and that that they wrote them wrote down themselves. It's <clears throat> it's a big big thing to do that, especially if you're a script writer in the film because it's you do a lot of writing and you just you got to write it down on paper get get those ideas out get them flowing yeah it's just another thing um you know, in the creative industry when you're trying to think about content you know i have to i have to constantly think about content as well too and you know when you're not writing things down or you're not collectively analyzing your thoughts or gathering them in some sort of way yeah you can't get into what they call the flow state you know where it just becomes natural you know like usually that time for me in the day it's around like 10 a.m to about 11 a.m that's when i'm like the most creative and i find that there's uh you know certain times throughout the day where i'll, I'll get like that but you know just writing those down and like you know, getting those thoughts onto paper, I think, is very important. You're right. Tell so you, you you started to mention a little bit about DOD for my listeners who are unfamiliar with that. Explain what that's all about, and just talk about what you do with that. DOD DOD is short for Dad Overcoming Divorce. I realized that <clears throat> if I was going to become an entrepreneur, I might as well dedicate my life to something that helps people, that will benefit them in the long run. Um, going back to the journaling thing, um, in my earlier entrepreneurial life, I was journaling a lot and um, I was writing a lot. 
And uh, in the midst of all of that, I asked myself, you know, who am I, who am I writing to? Like, who, am I, who am I reaching out to here? And it was divorced dads because I was going through a divorce myself. And, uh, you know, it was a really rough time. As, uh, as you can see, <clears throat> for a lot of people, um, for a lot of men as well, because it's hard for them to articulate their emotions. And so I found this, you know, little niche, so to say, that, um, you know, when I was looking for support, I couldn't find much. There's only, um, you know, one or two or three maybe possible um, support groups for men that are going through a divorce. And uh, so I, I, I found that there was a real need for it because I knew that if I'm looking for it and I can't find it, um, there's probably other men out there uh, going through the same thing, trying to look for uh, support and they can't find it. So um, I noticed that uh, for, for women, there's a lot of these support groups available. There's all kinds, uh, but for men, there's not many options available. So that's what DOD is. It's um, you know just for men, basically uh, going through a tough time and uh, I realized that in my upcoming book that I wrote, uh, you know, there's a foundational way of thinking that we need to approach uh, this this kind of downfall, this divorce, and it's uh, you know four areas of our life, and that's kind of where uh, you know you mentioned the happiness quadrant. Um, that's what I've kind of dubbed it, uh, the HQ for short, and uh, it's just an acronym, like I said, for the happiness quadrant, and it's just a, it's just a foundational way of thinking. It's nothing mind-blowing or nothing it's just you know four specific areas of our life that we need to pay specific attention to and um, you know I try to get the the guys to uh, build that foundation for themselves again because you know after coming out of a divorce you're broken you you have to start all over again a lot of your identity gets wrapped up in your marriage and you know when all that all when all of that is gone uh you're back at square one and you have to really pick up the pieces from from ground zero and uh you know so what else uh is a perfect way to you know implement a new foundational way of thinking when you're at rock bottom right when you're more open to uh suggestions so that's why i've created dod it's um, a platform for, like I said, divorced dads to come on and, um, you know, vent, get over uh, whatever it is that they're going through and then get support uh, mentally, emotionally, you know, spiritually and uh, as well as financially as well. Like, um, you know, a lot of divorces don't end up really, you know, nice. It, a lot of money gets thrown around and all kinds of men are just broken. They're living... You know, some of them are homeless. Some of them are, you know, living in one-bedroom apartments after they've lived in nice homes. And, uh, you know, they're just... Uh, the, the financial thing is definitely one of those areas that not many people think about, okay? And so this is why I'm trying to implement all of this to um, the HQ so that these men can give themselves a way uh, to, to, to give them... to, to pry out of whatever box that they had put themselves in so that's what the OD is in a nutshell yeah what you're doing like you like you said there's a lot of these groups for women but it's rare to see an actual group where where men can go to that or going to because they go through the same things and they have less support to tackle and you're you're doing you're, you're offering men a place to go to take that or take take their mask off and just be open and i just knowing that what who has the most influence in your life that led you down this path um, you kind of just talked about it a little bit uh, we, earlier. You know, Lewis House, you know, a very, very famous podcaster. Uh, when I was going through, you know, my deep and dark time, I knew what was destroying me. I knew there was something on, uh, going on inside of my head that I, I wasn't able to let go, and that was my ego. Um, as men, I find that we struggle, we, we really, really struggle with our ego. 
it's hard to let go of is because of all of our you know childhood wiring about um, not showing weakness and, and and so on and so forth the masks that you just talked about and uh, you know Lewis um, had this podcast out uh, with Ryan Holiday and I just remember falling down that rabbit hole and I was like this was the podcast that kind of just opened my eyes to personal development. This is a uh, uh, probably like two and a half years ago, but I was always into personal development. Like mind you, I was always into like the old spiritual leaders, like you know, Les Brown. We got Zig Ziglar. We got you know Wayne Dyer. Uh, you know Paulo Coelho. These kinds of guys kind of paved the way. You know Tony Robbins. I can't believe I didn't mention Tony Robbins. Um, you know, these, these are the men that kind of pave the way for personal development. I've always been, you know, accustomed to them. But I think the most influential person that, um, that was on me was Lewis, just because he had put so many mentors in front of me with his podcast. And when I say mentors, I say that lightly. I didn't work underneath them or I didn't, uh, you know, get to call them and say, hey, man, like, this is what I'm going through. No, what I, what I mean by mentors is that... Um, I learned from them. I took all their information that, you know, all their life's work and, you know, everyone had their own little things. But Ryan Holiday knew how to battle the ego. And then, uh, you know, other, there was other, uh, other uh, episodes that brought light to other subjects, such as like, you know, vulnerability and, uh, you know, having heart-centered approaches and so on and so forth. And so, I just remember falling in love with this podcast, and yeah, that was one of the most influential pieces. Um, and then joining Soga was was really the kicker. Was when I got all the clarity I needed um, in terms of what my end goal looked like, like we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, it was just it was that last piece of the puzzle that I needed that uh, that really got to me, uh, that got me where I'm at right now and uh, where I'm headed. So. I would say, uh, yeah, Wayne Lewis. So, so, so he did open that the can of worms, so to, to, and it really helped open something up to you. And I, I remember, I'm, I'm playing catch up because I've been just listening to all his podcasts in the last year. I remember that Ryan Holiday episode. Um talking about ego he, and and what I like about his podcast is each episode that he does is has touches on one part of life that you you may have gone through or you will go through at one point yeah that's why I love it and you know I've always been a fan and you know anybody who it is looking for purpose i think it's great to follow a guy like that just because you know he does um, such great work in helping people find it and he's very good at it and uh you know i just i recommend anybody you know the mastermind principle and and, and bring in mentors like quote unquote mentors and using finger quotes here because <clears throat> you don't have to be underneath them in order to learn from them all these people have books to read they have videos to digest they have um social media where you can see excuse me you can see what they're up to on a daily basis and then just go and see what that energy is about um and and, and you know put your mind in uh, put those kinds of things into your mind a lot of people digest you know um the wrong things on social media like and then they fall down those rabbit holes and it's just you know polluting your mind not only that but it's also you know filling it up and filling up your your mind with with you know things that don't really matter and uh it's it's okay to have recreational shows to watch and stuff like that but i i kind of more or less look at them as a treat as a, a recreational kind of thing and um yeah just listening to guys like lewis and they'll always put you know positive thoughts into your mind and they'll always put positive feelings and you know, give you positive call to action and these people won't steer you wrong as opposed to you know watching negative media and and so on so for sure so
success and failure. A, a lot of things. People always look to success more than failure, obviously. But some, you could say, you could actually fear success as well as failure. If someone fails at a task that they set out to do or accomplish, it likely brings themselves down, right? Yeah, what, I mean... What are some steps that you that some some key steps that people should know like about success and about failure um i think embrace your failures you know celebrate your wins when you can uh not when you can i think you should always celebrate your wins you know, no matter how big or how small Always praise yourself. If you're working with groups, uh, you know, always praise the team. You know, those kinds of things will train your mind into thinking, hey, I want to do more of that. I want to do, um, I want to celebrate my wins more. You know, it'll encourage yourself to, to do that. Um, you know, positive self-talk, that's just where you need to be at um, always feed yourself the right loving words and the way i always see it is or the way i always tell people to to tell your to talk to yourself is as if it's like from a loving mother you know a loving grandmother or somebody who would you know say hey son you're doing very a very good job like, good on you don't worry about you know your failures right now at least you're trying you know and that's how a, a grandmother would talk to you and I always suggest for people to talk to yourself like that because also all too often we hear the, the negative voices in our head that say, you know, after a failure, like, yeah, see, I told you so, or, you know, uh, this is what happens when you try, you, you know, and, and these kinds of things poison our mind. And so <clears throat> it's just about coaxing our brain to, you know, celebrating our wins and you know, keep going in that direction because success will eventually come. Um, failure is inevitable as well. You can't avoid failure. You're going to fail. That's just how it is. But um, looking at failure as a lesson as opposed to uh, something that, you know, you're going to shove underneath a rug and you know, wait for that to bite you up in your, uh, your butt later on. So it's better to just embrace the failure, like I said, and then, you know, what, what is it that I can learn from it? Like, there's, it's obviously a, a lesson. And um, yeah, and then just celebrating your wins, I think, um, will definitely get you on the right path to success. So, no matter how small they are. This this might this, this might, might come off a little that's crazy sounding, but how how do you celebrate failures? Abstractly, but celebrating failures, for example, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was, you know, divorce parties. Um, just because in the line of work that I'm in, um, a lot of, uh, I guess there's like a lot of trend going towards divorce parties where, um, you know, after the divorce is done, uh, you know, that's that's that to me is a failure in my opinion. You know. I mean, you know Divorce is not something that you should look at as like an out. <laughs> it's not something to be proud of. And so, you know, in terms of that, uh, that's a good way of turning a negative into a positive and just throwing a party for, uh, at the end of the day, you know, once, once everything is done, because it was a very stressful time. And, um, you know, celebrating the new beginning, right? Um, as opposed to sulking and, uh, telling yourself that your life is now over which it's not i mean there's so much more to live after that um you know it's just that our like i said our identities get wrapped up into one certain thing so that's what i would do i'm glad you brought but, brought up as as a as if it was a party because i actually just had a thought of that just now and and that's why I asked I wanted to get your thoughts on it before I I I said what I was thinking I 
critiques, criticism, all the critics, those are the biggest party guests when you're celebrating failure. And and like you said a couple questions before you got to embrace the criticism and it has to be brought to you more in a positive light otherwise you you're less likely to embrace it does that make sense absolutely and i always talk about delivery compassion you know uh, when when somebody comes to you with a failure come to you with a you know vulnerability you know opening up and saying dude i failed um you know the last thing you want to do is discourage him for you know failing <laughs> right um uh, so that's why it's important that we just you know, kind of bring that light say okay, you know what there's there's a lesson behind it like there's obviously something that we can learn from here so we don't make this mistake I think pain is a very good guide. Um, is a very good guide um, on the on the things that we should avoid, right? And uh, <clears throat> you know, just tuning into that as well, it, it can help definitely put you on the right path towards, um, you know, I guess finding that purpose again. Going back to wrapping this all toward purpose, uh, it help you get back to that point. And, and the reason why you should, uh, you know, go on as opposed to, as opposed to tread backwards, right? In terms of looking at your failures, so a lot of people will close up after after failing. So they'll give up. They don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to go on and fail again because there's a little bit of pain involved. Um. So so they'll avoid it. But I mean, uh, like I said, pain is kind of a guide. Um, there's a lesson behind all that. It's teaching you something and it, it's more of a teacher you know a loving teacher <laughs> even though it hurts but um, I just just like I said and, it, and the way that we deliver our, our critiques and our criticisms they have to be you know compassionate they do they have to be empathetic towards each other uh, especially when you're in a broken state of mind right uh, I think Funny Robbins talks about, uh, you know, shock, shocking them when they're at their, at their lowest. Um, that, that could probably work uh, to a certain extent for a certain person. Um, but just my delivery is always just being, you know, just passionate and, and empathetic toward anyone's failures. You know, you should never, you should never discourage anyone who's trying, I think. As long as they're trying, they're, they should always keep, um, you should always keep promoting people like that. All right, so we right. we've been spending a, a little bit of time now on the failures and and failing in general and how it's not all bad, it's good, but let's try and turn this around instead of looking at failure <clears throat> as an out and an ending. Try to yeah, move man, it's from just... it. Sorry, go go ahead. Yeah, it's completely what you're saying. It's it's a failure should definitely be transitioning into something, you know, more positive. The five peop five reasons people what? never discover their purpose. They're from the outside. They start on the outside and they look inward. That's number one. You look for the career before you listen for a calling you hate silence you don't like the dark side of yourself and we've touched on all these things briefly a little bit you and you devalue the unconscious mind turning that around how we can move forward and seek a purpose may be coming out of these how start with the number one how do we look from the inside and then go outward I think uh, everyone has a story uh, that they're tied they're attached to in their mind there's there's always something that uh, a child or you know an adult will hold on to 
as they grow up, that means a lot to them. And I think when we navigate through life, sometimes we uh, aren't aware of it yet. Sometimes we don't have these epiphanies until later, much later. And, you know, kind of tying into that, I think more you turn inward and the more spiritually connected you are to your soul and, you know, the greater good and the purpose of, you know, without going too, too spiritual, I think, um, you know, you can get there. We, we can analyze um, what it is that, that really, really is our purpose, our real, what it is that truly, truly makes us happy inside completely, like to, to the fullest extent. And uh, what I realized as well is that these feelings can change. Um, you know, when I was 25, I was very passionate about real estate. I was very passionate about business and, um, you know, making money and doing all those kinds of things. And I was very, very passionate about that. And I felt like that, that was my purpose. Um, but then, you know, fast forward, you know, five years later, my, complete, my purpose completely changed. So I think that's also, you know, important to note that you may have, thought you found it once and then fail and I think that's the biggest lesson that I learned you know from my failure was was knowing that I wasn't on the right path but that was the the wake-up call and you know that was the blessing in, in disguise so uh, I don't know where I was going with that but <laughs> um, I think just finding purpose throughout that is is yeah, just really, really asking yourself inside, and what is it that you gravitate towards, and you know, being okay with the fact that it could change. A couple of years ago, or or five years ago, one of the two, I was started another career search. I was job seeking, and I I end up uh, right out of college. I was. I that that's when I landed my gig at Fox and I was looking at, oh I hey I got into Fox I'm doing good what next and it took me a little over f five years to realize that it's it's more than just getting in there you you got to know why you know where you want to go what what do you want to do and you know this day I'm learning more about myself that I'm trying to put this all together as I go along uh, but for the most part I was what I've learned right now is knowing what I can do to help others with, with something and it's about putting that together serving them so that's the second reason that people never discover the purpose they're looking for that career but that's a great. That's a really great point, actually. Going from you know, starting from the inside, how do you, how did you see your calling? How did it come to you? You yeah, may have mentioned yeah. it in the in the in one of the previous questions, but maybe going a little deeper here. For sure, I'm gonna go a really deep, and you know, the biggest thing that really really unlocked it for me was I had to stop caring what other people thought of me and what their their perceptions needed to be of me. Uh, I was very like perfectionist. I had to look good. I had everything to, you know, uh, everything needed to look prim and proper. Uh, and I realized, you know, those kinds of things are good in a certain light, just not when it's taking up your inner peace. And so, 
the biggest thing for me was stop was stop being was stopping to try to impress everybody. You know, I for example, um, my mom had this, or my parents had this idea that if you go to university, that you are successful, not college, um, or if you just finish high school. So they had this idea that if you don't go to university, that you're not successful. And so, in my mind, you know, uh, coming from a business background and then reading, you know, Rich Dad Poor Dad in my, you know, my sophomore year of university. I realized you don't need university, and but I was doing that for them. I was doing that for my parents. I wasn't doing that for me. And there was a lot of instances where, uh, you know, in my life where I was trying to do something for another person, like what they what they wanted me to do or what they thought they should want of me to do. And uh, once I started to let go of that and started, you know, really started doing the things that I love doing, and things that I, I'd like to do um, or the way that I envisioned things as opposed to the way other people envision things for me um, that's when I really started to unlock um, all the power that I knew that I had that everybody had everyone has this um, but like I said the, the, the traps that we put ourselves in are the hardest to get out number three uh the number three reason why someone wouldn't discover their purpose. They hate silence. How could you love or learn to love being in quiet time, having quiet time? Oh, I love quiet time. So I don't know. Maybe that's more like an extroverted person who wrote that. But I love silence. I really enjoy it most people will listen to music in their cars i don't listen to anything and if i do listen to something it's more it's always podcasts um but other than that i love silence i love walking in nature completely silent um, my meditations are silent um, you know so really it's just about turning that upside down and saying you know there's so much serenity behind it you know so much peace and calm calmness and it gets you in tune with so many other senses you know that we're not really always paying attention to like self like smells and sounds i'm sorry and sights um you know visual visual stimulation and i i just don't understand how somebody could um not like silence but if somebody who does and is in that position i would just say look at all the bright sides to it you know there's so much more that we aren't paying attention to and that we could be paying attention to uh just by just by sitting in it embracing it after myself thinking about this question i realize like you hate silence well i don't know if i hate silence but i like to be in the city where there's a lot of hustle and bustle like there's noises everywhere and i like to consider that actually being a part of my silence like, as you're being in the environment like or nature nature has certain sound as well just walking through a park or whatever whatever someone likes likes the most likes to do if they live in the city horns people talking s stepping on the ground the footsteps on the ground that may be a kind of a silence would would <laughs> what, what do you think uh, yeah what? that that's exactly what i mean by the silence and uh, i'm you know, another thing just touch upon, you know, silence is if it's really uncomfortable because of the thoughts inside of your head, then you need to be thinking new thoughts, I think. Um, you know, silent time, I get a lot of very uplifting, positive thoughts in my silent time, you know, for example. Uh, and, when, and like I said, what I mean by silent time is when 
you know, it could be it could be in nature. We could still be listening to you know uh, us our feet crunching the leaves underneath us or branches, and you know birds whistling and, and you know just whatever the water is humming. Uh, you know, I consider that a silence still. So I guess you know having a definition of that, but I mean, locked in a room by yourself alone, that silence shouldn't be. Um, uncomfortable is what I'm saying if it is it's probably because of the thoughts that are going on in your mind I think so, so everybody so, I, I heard this I, I... somewhere someone mentioning like everyone has a you when you talk about the yin yang the yin yang Everyone has a yin and yang. I, I, I was hearing this just last night somewhere, and it, it just made me think of it. Everyone has a dark side. And number four reason why people don't discover their purpose is they don't like the dark side of yourself. And when you said thoughts, that hit it right in nail on number four. How do you start to drain out... How do you filter those dark sides and just think more positively? I think just journaling, writing down those thoughts as negative as they are, as, as ugly as they are, write them down so you can see them. Um, I had a lot of dark thoughts about myself after my divorce. I wish I had those notes actually. Um, you know, but I wrote down a lot of really negative things uh, about myself that I used to think about myself just for the sake of getting it out because I had no one to really talk to about it. And, uh, you know, so the pen and the paper was the only thing I had. Uh, you know, so write it out. Write those thoughts out so you can see them and see how ugly they are. And, you know, you might have to cry over them a little bit. Um, you might have to you know, battle some of the emotions that come up from those words because, you know, words, the thoughts come from our words and, you know, vice versa. There's different, it's just a, it's just a two-way street. It goes back and forth. So, <clears throat> you know, when you write down those kinds of things in a journal or what have you, and you kind of, you know, kick back and uh, analyze them and, and look at them for what it is, uh, there's a lot of healing that needs to be going on uh, with all that. Uh, because of those dark emotions, those dark thoughts. And it's okay to have them, like you said, um, but more, more or less, it's better to face them head on as opposed to veer away from them because, yeah, like you said, it'll stop them from you know gaining purpose in their life. And, uh, you know, just knowing your weaknesses is, is not a bad thing. Um, I, I think you understand that from Soga. You know, we had to ask a couple of our friends uh, for our... You know strengths and weaknesses and i'm sure the weaknesses are you know those internal voices in our head as well you know those things that we tell ourselves in our in the silence that you know we're not good enough or you know what are you thinking and, you know these kinds of things always pop up in my head and i know they do you know quite frequently but that has to do with a lot of you know past childhood wiring that i'm undoing but you know starting from writing it down is is kind of where uh, i would recommend it anybody to start So the fifth so and the, the final and the f- reason why someone would not discover their purpose, devaluing the unconscious mind. And how do we just turn that around and and value the unconscious mind? steps or there's any any uh it's an image that i would like to share with you i don't know if you could put it in the show notes but um it's an image and um the best way i can explain this image is you're looking at the horizon of an ocean and there is the tip of an iceberg and underneath that iceberg is something that's 10 times its mass um that 
than, than that of what's sticking what's on top of the ocean part. And um, this, this image refers to how uh, Freud, you know, he, he talked about you know, having the ego and the ID and super ego. And, um, and that's kind of where all of that unconscious stuff sits. And um, we cannot devalue that. Um, there's a lot going on um, underneath the surface that a lot of us don't see. And, you know, that's the, that's the, last, the, that's the last thing that we want to do is devalue our, our unconscious mind because those are the decisions that are you know, ultimately guiding us. And um, without getting too, too spiritual on you, I think, you know, the best way to connect with that is is uh, is meditate is, is you know really trying to get to a place um, inside of your inside of your mind where you can you know analyze and look and face your unconscious mind head on and almost see what it is. It takes a lot of time to get there. Um, it takes a lot of practice. I think you know the, the early meditators can do that right away. I think it takes a lot of practice, a lot of time and effort to, to get there. Um, but definitely, you know, face it head on. Don't be afraid of it. Don't devalue it. Don't brush it under a rug. Don't, uh, you know, avoid it. Don't flee from it. Always, always embrace it, I think, is, is just what needs to be done in order for, uh, you know, to, to really find that purpose, to really find what it is that you're searching uh, for you know, on this earth and, and what you need to do. So whether you're an actor or you're, you know, a producer or whatever, what have you, a, a screenwriter, um, all these types of things excel. You just excel in, in the way that you do them when you have a purpose. So, yeah, man. That's it. Well, I struggle with the whole meditation right now, but I use this app you probably heard of it too you probably even use it headspace yeah that was great you know when i first started meditating it would give me um kind of like a like some guidance you know kind of like uh and a routine and uh you know it was great for the beginning but now i just meditate uh, you know completely in silence now with no with no um no guidance, but if, if you're in need of that, definitely that's how you should start out. Um, and just finding what works for you. If 10 minutes is too long, you know, do six minutes, right? But the point of the matter is, is to just try to separate yourself and give yourself some space, some peace with thoughts that are going on inside of your head. That was the five reasons why people never discover their purpose and we just ha found went through how to turn that around and i just rob i just want to acknowledge you for doing what you do with your dod d divorce dads on dads over divorce dads over, yeah dads over coming divorce I acknowledge you because you're again you're helping people remove that mask take it off and let other people in let other people see them and that's a great thing what you're doing for those people for those men in general acknowledging you for that thanks man i appreciate that i do and check out his his podcast he has a podcast as well the happiness quadrant and where where can people go to check that out yeah right now everything is just on my website uh, robinchoe.com I'll uh, give you the link so you can put it in the notes um, it's just r-o-b-i-n-c-h-o-e.com you'll see the podcast links in uh, the heading there we try to get it out to uh, on iTunes later this week or next week, hopefully, so we can get all caught up. But I'm already at uh, episode 45. You guys might have a little bit of catch up to do. 
uh, but definitely check them all out. There's a lot of interviews. Um, if you're if you know somebody going through a divorce, or even you know children of divorce, I'm, I'm starting to reach out to them because I understand there's a dynamic there that doesn't get talked about too often. So, uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how the how the podcast goes, but definitely follow it. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate the plug. And the time of the podcast, which I kind of like the most to do i i model it after i was i was actually using the exact question that lewis used in his ending of the podcast but i i changed it up to fit more into the movies and film and the, you know his three questions that he asks. Yes. well i changed it up and and here's what I I've been asking people now. Three movies or TV shows. Trying to turn this, spin this back into the film world a little bit. Three movies or TV shows that you can list that describe or have something in common with your life. Like, what are three movies or TV shows? funny that you mentioned that because uh, there was this show that I used to or this movie that I used to love watching and everyone's heard of it I'm going to name it in the second year but I used to know all the words to it I just like always had it on repeat and loved the actors in it loved the acting in it and it was just such a great movie I didn't realize how much of an impact it had on me until now when I rewatched it and uh, that movie is missing so far and uh, it was a movie about, actually about divorce. I'm sure you've heard of it with Robin Williams. Uh, you have to go through all kinds of <laughs> stuff just to see his kids. And, you know, that's kind of where I'm at right now in life. So that was definitely one of them. Uh, another movie that has a real direct impact on what I am at do- doing now is um, Bloodsport. Uh and, and not because of the fighting aspect or of it. It's just the whole honor behind what he's doing. He, he wants to restore honor and faith back into uh, you know, the person who helped him get to where he was at. And it was just this story, incredible story of him uh, you know, doing whatever it took to restore that honor and faith and you know, give, give uh, back to you know, his, uh, his early mentor. So that's kind of where I'm at right now uh, in terms of that. So Bloodsport with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, I just love any kind of storylines uh, um, like that. Um, and I guess the third one, hmm, it's a good question. I think any redemption story is great. Uh, so I don't know why I'm thinking like, independence day right now but any any kind of one of those like really you know redemption kind of stories but it's like sacrifice uh, you know can't remember his name i can't remember the actor's name who uh sacrificed his own life to to kill that ship but he flew into it um and you know that that to me resonates so much because just i i live my life in service now for people and I, I could totally see myself, uh, you know, just being that martyr, I guess, or being that one who, uh, you know, kind of saves the earth. And, um, you know, that, I guess the, any kind of redemption story like that is, is definitely been a huge influence on my life. Or like the, the drawing straws the draw- scene in, in uh, Armageddon, Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that one, too. That one was, was just... Uh, Heart, heart wrenching, but it's it's so it's all the type of person that um, I, I resonate with. So. so why do you think? I know you're not a, a film person, but why do you think we just talked about movies and and it's storytelling in general? Why do you think film or storytelling is important in our world? It's just the only way that people will resonate with it. I think 
a story is what people will remember. They'll never remember the lesson, but they'll remember the story, and then it'll revert back to the lesson. And if you really want people to remember something about you, or or remember like a, a really really powerful moral or you know lesson that you want to give as a story or like you know film writer or screenwriter or something like that, that story is just that is what number one sells it. You know, from a monetary perspective, but you know, on a on a deep on a deeper level. You know that's what everyone takes home and resonates with the most. Um, I've I've I know there's a book out there called uh, The Power of Storytelling or something like that. Um, I'm definitely wanting to try to get my hands on that. Uh, it's been on my radar, but um, there's definitely power behind it, um, and uh, there's definitely some sort of truth to the reasons why we connect to stories so well because I hold on to a lot of stories um you know I find that the great ways there are great ways to to learn things um you know for example like the movies um, you know even though I'm not really an actor or a film buff or any of that like I, I love you know just cinematography in general and the messages that it, they use to or they how they use cinematography to to relay those messages and so um, yeah, I'm just a huge fan of, you know, having a story and have that relate to you um, so you can resonate with it, so. And the final question, what is it that you want to learn from someone who has seen success multiple times? Could be someone famous, someone who's not so famous. Or just anyone. Anyone. Um, somebody who's successful like twice over. The reason I think I would probably pick a lot of business type people, like people who have lost like you know, millions and billions of dollars have gone bankrupt and then, you know, had to start all over again. Um, I think those people you can learn so much from. And I'd love to get in front of them, um, you know, but I don't know why I keep thinking like Donald Trump, but, you know, because he's been, he's been bankrupt for so many times. Um, you know, but just having, you know, having been wiped out um, you know, not just monetarily, but anyone who's just been wiped out and then, you know, had to regain that success again. Uh, I think there's just so much story and backstory to that and so much lessons and knowledge that and wisdom that can be can be portrayed, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a film, I think. Um, you know, just along that line. So I would love to pick somebody like that in their minds. Is that the question? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was who do you who do you want to learn from? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Donald Trump or you know uh, just anybody who's gone through uh, a financial hard party. Um, I think it'd be a lot to learn because a lot of the the principles would be the same. And I just learned something myself about this question. It's who do you who, it should be who do you want to learn from who's experienced failure and then had success multiple times just, just throw that in there because the failure is the without failure success is nothing <laughs> but uh we've we've come to the end of this i think it's been an hour or so <laughs> And a lot of good talk. We got a little talking to the spiritual side and about being vulnerable and and having purpose. And it was all good. And continue doing what you're doing. And I look to keep seeing what you do, following you and listening to you as well. 
I appreciate you, brother. Whenever you need me to come back on again, you can. So, I got you. Thanks for having me on. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy it, please share it with your fellow filmmakers and friends and comment on why you liked it and what stood out to you. Be sure to check back here for all the latest weekly episodes to see who I talk with next. Give a shout out to Rob on social media and let him know you heard him on the show. Thank you again for listening and subscribing to In The Film World and hope you got some value from this episode.